pork, plantains, rice, black beans, and mojitos. These are the staples of Cuban cuisine and culture. And La Habana has been bringing all this and more to South Austin since 2001. Isabel Flores, the owner, grew up in East Havana. She moved to Texas as a teenager with her mother, and this land of opportunity soon reaped a harvest. I met my husband the first day I got here. This is faith, this mm -hmm. divine intervention, yep. right? Yep. He's an engineer, uh -huh. and um, he said, what do you think if we start a Cuban <laughs> restaurant? And I was like, um. Isabel wasn't a cook, but she and her husband Ron figured it out, bringing Austin all the flavors of Havana. Oh, na, na. My grandma was living in Austin at the time, so it was like, how okay. do you make oh. this, and how do you do it, and right. let's tweak it. So it was, it was really a compilation of my mom, my grandma, my aunt, you know, the yeah. tamales was a, a big one. Yes, Cuban tamales are a thing. Cuban nachos, well, that's a Habana thing, just for Austin. This is not traditional Cuban, is it? No, it's not. This, so, is, our, this is our twist on the nachos, you know I mean? Okay. We're so in what, Texas. Of course. A bed of fried plantains, mojo sauce made from pork drippings, black beans, roasted pork, and of course, all the Texas nacho toppings. Zero fat. Z zero fat, mm -hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, you got to keep that Cuban beach body, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that is good. That is really good. But like the plantains have this sort of like light crisp and chew that tortilla mm -hmm. chips don't have. No, yep. And is it all pork mostly? Uh, is that the national meat of Cuba? Absolutely. Okay. It's an island. Yeah, sure. So we yeah. don't have a lot of cattle. It's illegal to kill a cow in Cuba, even if you own it. What? Mm-hmm. PSA to all the cows watching this, move to Cuba. Now, Isabel and Ron knew that if you open a Cuban restaurant, you have to nail the mojito. It's the national cocktail of Cuba, a mix of mint and sugar, lime and rum. Oh, good. I've got to say, that might be the best one I've ever had. You guys didn't go shy on the mint. No. You know, you know Cuba is one of those places I've wanted to go my whole life. It's just so warm and uh, inviting. The people are so nice. The music is amazing. Sure. You okay. know, once you go one time, then it's, it's over, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought Cuba to us. If we can't go there, you brought it here to South Austin. Absolutely. So thank you. Salud. Salud. This is where the magic oh, happens. Oh, you can smell the roasting spices. This is my mom. Ah, Laura. Madre, hola. Come to find out. Cubans don't keep it spicy. Bell peppers is as spicy as it gets. And my, yeah, that's it. My, this is it. Literally, my one-year-old eats bell peppers. In Cuba, that's yeah. a tradition. We don't do just no, uh, no spices. No. Man, and I would have thought y'all brought it over the top. That was just my misconception. No, no, so no. So there's not much heat, but still plenty of flavor from onion and garlic and cumin, especially in their signature Cuban side dish of cone gris. This is your white rice cooked inside black beans. Black beans, man. With a little bit of pork fat. Oh! Make it a taco and shovel it in my mouth. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, there's some pieces of that pork. Oh, you find it? Oh, yeah. Woo! From the yucca root. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. To the pork, slow roasted for eight hours in a bath of sour oranges. Marinated, and then you just give it time. I mean, this pork took time. Don't rush a Cuban and don't rush Cuban pork. Is there such a thing, Yasbel, as Cuban time? Like Cuban time? Island it? time. Island time. And when you're talking about the gateway into Cuban food, well, you gotta mention the Cuban sandwich. Something mama here knows well. The Cuban bread is a special bread they make it for us. Not just French bread? No, no. It's a special steamed bread mixed with plenty of lard. Add in the mustard, ham, Swiss cheese, pickles, and slow roasted pork, and you've got a Cuban classic. So the history of the Cuban sandwich, it didn't even start in Cuba. Okay, It really? started in Tampa. Oh, all right, With the all cigar right. rollers. So. Blow yeah, mine. They made it for the world trade because it's easy. To sure, throw. yeah, it's put it in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't uh -huh. go bad. Yeah. Ah, interesting. See, it isn't just Texans putting our own spin on ethnic foods, but it's the food itself that breaks down barriers. Time to sit down and share some Cuban culture with my stomach. All right, so I think I still have a little bit of room in my stomach, and I got the vaca frita. They got a little lime on the side, and let's just lime the whole thing. All right, here we go. Look at that. Oh, that's a good bite right there. 
tender shredded beef. I was like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I got noodles here. Let's get a little pepper in there. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's delicious. I'm gonna resist the urge to put that on a tortilla because there's a big part of me that wants to put that on a tortilla. <laughs> oh yeah.